Download Unwashy app from Play Store and watch carefully curated documentaries, short films, talk shows, and podcasts. Download link is available in video description. Vado Jalpo Vitandeti Trividha Vidusham Katha. Welcome to MH Podcast. Sambhashanam. Listen to part 1 of a discussion on Tirtha Prabandha of Shri Vadiraja Yati. ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಹರಿಪ್ರಸಾದ್ ಅವರೇ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ರಘುತ್ತಮ್ ಅವರೇ ಐ ಆಮ್ ವೆರಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಯು ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪಾಡ್ಕಾಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಹಿ ಆರ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲಕ್ಕಿ ಟು ಬಿ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಷನ್ ರಘುತ್ತಮ್ ಅವರೇ ಯಾ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸೊ ದಿ ಐಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಎಮ್ ಎಚ್ ಪಾಡ್ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಟು ಡೆವಲಪ್ appreciative literature because now we are living in such environment where atrocity literature has become mainstream so instead of that uh, uh, instead of that uh, a, a small attempt is being made at individual capacity to bring out appreciative literature absolutely now i have gone through several of your uh, podcasts and uh, this is truly a commendable effort uh, from your side uh you know uh, so it, it feels really good to be a part of this initiative uh thank thank you thank you for the kind words the topic that i would like to uh, uh, you know discuss with you or speak to you on this podcast is my most favorite uh, shastra kavya tirtha prabandha by shri vadraja tirtha indeed a couple of years back you did a tremendous job of translating the entire kavya into english uh, that's not a, a simple thing to do or a mean achievement because it has got both the spiritual as well as uh, you know mundane angles to it mundane angle is that uh, people can know how many kshetras are there and what is the story behind them etc right no definitely it covers uh, multiple angles a spiritual angle historical angle and then uh, obviously it is a primer to geography uh, geography of bharata so like you said uh, there are uh, multiple angles and di- multiple dimensions to his uh, shastra kavya that uh, shri vadiraja tirtha has uh, given us yes so because it is multifaceted uh, it is not just uh, limited to the spiritual realm itself absolutely so it it uh, encompasses the regular mundane as well as historical aspects uh, of uh, the sacred geography of uh, bharata desha so in this regard i would like to listen from you more about the background of your translation like or what inspired you or who inspired you to undertake such a mammoth exercise of translating nearly 236 shlokas giving uh, pratipadartha word to word meaning and also adding additional notes to it so it it is a huge task so the circumstances the experiences that you have underwent while doing the translation the challenges that you have faced and how you overcame all those obstacles or challenges uh, i i love to hear and through this podcast i also would like uh the listeners to to understand the effort that you have put in doing this translation so over to you now thank you thank you raghutama ji so uh, certainly it's a very it has been a very interesting experience um, i think just to give a brief background into uh, my uh, exposure to tirtha prabandha itself uh, the first time uh, that i started uh, studying a little bit of tirtha prabandha Uh, was uh, several years ago maybe 8 or 10 years ago mm-hmm. uh, you know used to be part of several uh, facebook uh, groups uh, you know dedicated to discussing uh, dvaita vedanta and uh, one of the hot topics of discussion in those facebook groups used to be the uh, mula brindavan of uh, shri jayatirtha mm-hmm. and as you know uh, you know uh, there is uh, material in the tirtha prabandha that uh, deals with this topic shri vadiraja tirtha has given us a couple of shlokas 
uh, where he you know eulogizes uh, shri jaitirtha in the context of uh, nava vrindavana so i mean that's that's obviously not the topic for uh, today's discussion but um, you know during those discussions and debates that's when i started reading and studying uh, tirtha prabandha uh, slowly and then it fascinated me the way shri vadiraja tirtha has actually uh, put together that uh, you know uh, work of shastra um, you know uh, we all know that he lived a glorious life of 120 years and in that he has undertaken so many pilgrimages so many tirtha yatras and to do this uh, you know uh, work of blessing for us uh, his devotees and followers uh, in the form of documenting all the places that he has visited i mean the the whole concept itself uh, you know appealed to me a lot so that was when uh, you know i first uh, started uh, making an effort towards understanding uh, tirtha brahmanda a little bit and then it was uh, somewhere in the middle of 2017 when the ram janmabhoomi movement uh, you know was uh, very very active uh, because of the case uh, which was reaching its final stages in the supreme court of india yeah there was lot of uh, material available uh, in the public domain especially on social media and uh, one of the things that uh, kept coming up uh, frequently was the argument by the leftist uh, historians um, you know that is being very kind to them of course uh, i would prefer calling them descendants of mantara uh, who were very active in the case and on social media uh, who were in <laughs> Uh, i mean obviously because uh, you know just like how mantara wanted rama out of ayodhya uh, the descendants of mantara want the same thing to happen <laughs> so uh, they were uh, arguing that uh, from the uh, supposed time of uh, the destruction of the temple you know as they called it mm. there was no contemporary evidence for uh, the fact that the temple had been destroyed so when i was going through that uh, it appeared to me it, it appealed to me that uh, shri vadiraja tirtha obviously had visited ayodhya as part of it and uh, you know also uh, written a shloka so you know i opened tirtha prabandha again and tried to delve on it uh, repeatedly and then it struck me as most wonderful mm. that uh, what shri vadiraja tirtha has written as a shloka in ayodhya is actually talking about the state of ayodhya at that point in time yes. I mean, we must remember that this was somewhere in the middle of uh, uh, the 16th century yes uh, and and uh, you know we are, i mean those of us who are a little bit familiar with dvaita vedanta obviously know the uh, special skill of shri vadiraja tirtha in in composing his works so you know whether it is humor whether it is uh, you know alliteration whether it is um, uh, logic uh you know and and our wisdom he is un uh, unparalleled yes so he has used those same techniques in the shloka corresponding to ayodhya also and uh, you know in a just uh, uh, i mean obviously i have written a article on it uh, the gist being that he has compared the town of ayodhya to a really really well decorated lakshana bharita um, you know uh, bride waiting or or a wife waiting for her husband to come back yes now this struck me as uh, something really really special right uh, i mean uh, why would somebody document the speciality of a place with such a simile such a comparison you know unless there was some context to it um, you know he himself has visited so many other places he either uh, you know uh, praises the kshetra uh, you know from a puranic reference or praises the murti for its beauty or radiance or the uh, the sannidhana of the um murti in granting devotees wishes and so on and so forth but only when it comes to ayodhya he has chosen to call it as a lady a very uh, pious lady who is waiting for her husband to come back now what does that mean <laughs> there can only be one context because he is comparing the state of the town of ayodhya at that point in time and indicating that rama is actually currently out of town and and we all know when when you say such a thing in the middle of the 16th century what it means and then thanks to you of course uh, where you know you were very kind enough to provide me with the the chronology of his various visits and um, the his yatra to north india which covered uh, ayodhya 
fell very well uh, into the range when uh, babar actually destroyed uh, you know the ram janmabhoomi uh, temple it was, i think it was about 8 to 10 years in the vicinity after uh, that incident so this fascinated me and then uh, you know i i actually looked up on the internet the uh, email address of uh, shrimati meenakshi jain ji uh, you know uh, the uh, you know she is a Uh, assistant professor uh, in the delhi university and then she has written several uh, books uh, you know very very well written books on rama and ayodhya and so i just uh, you know took the chance and wrote to her um, asking if uh, you know she can opine on this article okay uh, and then believe it or not a few hours later she replied back uh, you know saying it was a nice article mm. and then she made a very interesting point that 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 very day in the morning somebody had pointed to her uh, a write up which talked about shri vadirajathi oh, okay believe it or not and she was actually researching and preparing the manuscript for her book uh, flight of dts at that time uh, which uh, specifically talked about the hindu resistance against mughal i mean uh, muslim invaders and how they preserved the kshetras and murtis and so on and uh, somebody had pointed out that uh, shri vadiraja tirtha had given some hints about the background of the murti in uh, vijayavithala temple in hampi and its potential connection to uh, you know the pandrapura mm-hmm. and and the fact that there are so many local uh, ballads and uh, stories behind how uh, pandrapura vithala moved from uh, pandrapura due to invasions and landed up in vijayanagara empire mm. and the fact that how the uh, murti in uh, vijay vitala temple could have been the same murti which eventually went back to pandrapura and then i looked up the shlokas vadiraja tirtha has written on uh, vijay vitala temple and lo and behold there is some there are some hidden messages there <laughs> the way he has uh, yes. uh you know structured those shlokas and he talks about uh, you know we uh, having come from somewhere uh, in a disguise yes, yes. Uh, and 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 so on and so forth so uh, there is plenty of material there to ponder over and uh, research so this happened and then uh, i i mentioned that the fact that these shlokas are very much uh, pointing towards such a possibility so meenakshi jain ji said that uh, she would very much love to include uh, references from tirtha prabandha in her work mm-hmm. and then uh, but the fact that an article is not really that appreciated in the form of a reference okay if it were to be a book that it would really really help her research okay so uh, she was the real uh, motivation uh, you know behind this work uh, and she suggested that uh, be, i mean she found couple of the translations i had done to be of uh, acceptable quality so she said why don't you give it a try why, uh, uh, why don't you finish it and then you know i could include that reference in the book and uh, and obviously there were a few months available because she was planning to release the book only in 2018 so so that's when i took it up and then you know uh, obviously the blessings of vadiraja tirtha was there otherwise it would simply would have not been possible uh, rajendra swami galu and uh, vadiraja tirtha obviously kind of gave the green signal so there were no real vignas uh, from then on uh, but but uh, that's how uh, you know several weeks later i had the first manuscript and then eventually uh, got it published uh, online as well as in amazon uh, kindle as a book uh, so that's the background excellent excellent yeah the uh, the style and uh, format of uh, shri vadiraja tirtha is par excellence and particularly this uh, tirtha prabandha stands out as uh, the best best example of his uh, dexterity both in giving the a uh, secular uh, information about that particular kshetra like uh, you know the width or the height or the grandeur etc which are visible to the naked eye and at the same time he also goes deeper into the spiritual realm and uh, educates the sadhakas how to meditate upon the god like for example if we if we take uh, rameshwara so he gives two meanings to the word rameshwara he says that 
ರಾಮ ಗೃಹೀತಾರ್ಧ ತನು ನತೋಸ್ಮಿ ಸೊ ರಾಮೇಶ್ವರ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ರಾಮೇಶ್ವರ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಪಾರ್ವತಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ರಾಮ ರೈಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೀ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಈಶ್ವರ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಯಜಮಾನ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಹರ್ ಹೆನ್ಸ್ ಹೀ ಈಸ್ ರಾಮೇಶ್ವರ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಅದರ್ ಸೈಡ್ ವೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಟು ದಿ ಲೋಕಲ್ ಲೆಜೆಂಡ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಥಳ ಪುರಾಣ ವಿಚ್ ಸೇಸ್ ದಟ್ ರಾಮೇಶ್ವರ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಕನ್ಸೆಕ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ so he says that yeah because he consecrated he became uh, rameshwara <laughs> ramakrutha pratishtham right 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 so he he defends the siddhanta which he is uh, ardently following he doesn't deny the local legends or dismiss them completely but he does a beautiful samanvaya from the standpoint of dvaita siddhanta exactly so so tirtha prabandha is such a treatise that anyone cutting across all the religious uh, schools or thoughts i mean within hindu pantheon i am telling right. within uh, sanatana dharma anybody for that matter can 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 uh, read and cherish absolutely yeah. that yeah that's right so now uh, you, you you gave a wonderful uh, information about uh, meenakshi jain ji her book and how your translation got triggered right by first by jaitirtha swami gadu and then followed by uh, the sarvottama rama right. <laughs> so when you had uh, that little window you uh, know very small time very few months time to translate text like uh, tirtha prabandha what were the challenges that you faced there was to begin with uh, there was one natural challenge so you know i uh, my knowledge of sanskrit is limited to be very very honest um i mean especially if you if anybody plans to engage me in a conversation i am going to struggle really really badly um you know i have uh, in 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 our current uh, education system itself whatever sanskrit knowledge was imparted uh, earlier in my schooling that was the only foundation so one of the big challenges was to make sure that even if an excellent translation and commentary is not possible at least it should be faithful and truthful to the uh, mula shlokas so obviously uh, without a hesitation i you know uh, relied upon a couple of uh, translations at least available one was by shri vyasnakare pramanjana charya avaru uh, and then i had one more uh, you know older book so that provided me uh, you know some references to make sure to you know repeatedly refer and make sure that the translation was not wavered that was the first challenge i would say you know how how uh, although the interest in providing an english translation was very very high for me and the subject itself is of extreme importance to me and extreme interest uh, how the handicap of uh, you know complete uh, grip over the language can be overcome the second one was obviously this was the first attempt of mine at uh, you know trying to put together a book even if it was of uh, smaller size so how to keep the interest level going and make sure that uh, you know it actually completes successfully and um, there of course one thing that helped me was the fact that i had uh, kind of given an assurance to meenakshi jain ji that i would you know complete it and give it so that was one motivation and then uh, what really helped was um, you know actually kind of undertaking a e yatra in a sense in the sense of following the same pattern of translation as to uh, you know the book and then uh, almost every day trying to cover at least one kshetra you know in terms of the translations obviously some of the uh, you know uh, kshetras like udupi and tirupati and badrinath uh took a little more time obviously because uh, shri vajradha tirtharu has uh, composed uh, you know numerous shlokas on these uh, kshetras but um, you know that was the pattern i followed and and strangely after you know a few tens of shlokas the you know the 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 beauty of the grantha and the you know the the greatness of the grantha took over me in a sense i mean uh, you know i started to enjoy what i was reading and translating uh, and then it kind of became apparent that, that you know one way or the other i have got to complete it so somewhere midway during the translation you know uh, 
the the interest uh, peaked uh, ragotham avare and then uh, kind of uh, i think uh, there was uh, it was pretty much certain that one way or the other i would complete it uh, you know but um, it is a challenge because um, there are so many uh, 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 shlokas to cover and also the style of uh, shlokas right each one he uses so many alankaras and so many styles and in some places he is praising the murti in some places he is praising the kshetra in some places he is he talks about he gives some examples from the puranas or you know other epics highlighting uh, the greatness of the location so that flow uh, is is also a challenger for a, a newcomer i would say uh, but but there is great enjoyment in in attempting that um you know there were some trigger points also to kind of uh, uh, bring bring me back on the interest path so for example when i was translating the shloka on kukke he actually gives a, a subtle reference to the practice of uh, made snana there you know that is ag- direct reference in fact you're right direct reference and so you know it it struck me that in the present context itself this shloka also could be you know so relevant in the context of whether it's a, an ancient practice or a tradition or who practiced it since how long it has been uh, it's unfortunate that um, you know that work and that shloka is not popular with those who are um, you know really juggling with this whole issue from a legal and other angle but shri vadiraja tirtha just like in so many other places has not hesitated to put his foot down and make a statement you know even in this issue he has left us a clue i mean like, like in so many other issues and and then obviously i talked about the navavrindavana shloka and then the pandrapura shloka of course was a major uh, you know uh, milestone in the translation attempt and the shlokas on tirupati fascinated me it's it's amazing and i i would say that for us madhvas again there is a bit of a direction there by shri vadirajaru you know uh, obviously madhvacharya uh, you know given the context and his uh, time and all of that is not made to many or if at all any direct references to tirupati kshetra but to remove any doubt in the mind uh, of of madhvas about uh, the sanidana and the you know the relevance of tirupati as a kshetra he has made sure that the maximum number of shlokas in tirtha prabandha are dedicated to tirupati so uh, a very very vital message a very very vital direction for madhvas i would say in in for their sadhana so this is very typical of uh, vadiraja tirthalo right without actually saying it he leaves a lot of messages <laughs> uh, he gives a lot of direction so so you know uh, this made the journey worthwhile and interesting and uh, you know kind of help overcome the challenges agotam uh, avare excellent i am reading this book for last 25 years uh to share my personal uh, association with this book i am reading this book uh, from almost uh, for the last 25 years and every day i recite some of these shlokas randomly when i am driving or when i am sitting idle when i am waiting for someone to come then uh, one or other talk shlokas will automatically come into my mind because for the last 25 years this book has been part and parcel of my day to day life so even though i am familiar with many of these shlokas even today after 25 years when i look at these shlokas something new or something novel keeps coming up maybe yeah uh, the rational rationalists may say that you know those are all your hallucinations but well even those hallucinations also when they can enlighten and brighten up my day and bring me out of pessimism then well and good let me have that kind of hallucination who says no it is better to have such a, you know healthy hallucinations than gulping a handful of tablets no if if that were true actually and uh, you know it uh, the blessings of vadiraja tirthar was not the cause then such hallucinations should have been possible with any other book also that is that does not happen right it is only with spe- specific spiritual texts which have been composed and blessed by uh, great rishis and uh, acharyas that this is possible so <laughs> i wouldn't uh, agree with the you know any such i mean obviously it is their job to kind of uh, discard uh, any spiritual uh, you know messages that we derive out of our sadhana but but uh, you know uh, for us uh, that is what matters 
In fact, again, I would say he has given a hint, right? Vadiraja Tirtharu, if you study the shlokas on Udupi Kshetra, for example, when he describes the Murti, that one through one shloka itself, you can interpret all the padas of the shloka as praising Krishna. And at the same time, it is also a description of the Dashavataras, uh, you know, uh, of, of uh, Paramatma. So, such wonderful... Uh, you know, shlokas which can be interpreted in multiple, multiple ways, uh, you know, only a great, uh, you know, saint like Vadirajaru could have composed something like it. MH Podcast, Sambhashanam, to be continued. Download Unveshi app from Play Store and watch carefully curated documentaries, short films, talk shows, and podcasts. Download link is available in video description. Vado Jalpo Vitandeti Welcome to MH Podcast, Sambhashanam. Listen to part 2 of a discussion on Tirtha Prabandha of Shri Vadira Jayati. After having an inspiration and then overcoming some challenges, when you are uh, continuing with your translation, were there any instances where you have felt that this has to wait means you are not getting the words proper words or you are not able to convey the original purport because your primary aim was to be loyal to the original to be to be vidheya to the mula now mula itself is a tough nut to crack even though it looks very simple any person with basic sanskrit knowledge can easily make out the meanings but it is not as easy as it appears to be so when you when you are having an impediment like not knowing samskrita well and translating such a wonderful and uh, shastra kavya read uh, having uh, deep meanings deeper meanings so when you are translating that into a language like english which may not have the words vocabulary that can carry the entire meaning of the original shloka so how did you manage? Did you take any expert's help or you just prayed to Vadi Raja to help you out? So how did you manage those situations? No, interesting. Uh, I, I, I mean, there were a couple of occasions at least where this happened. You know, unfortunately, uh, given the uh, nature of my, um, you know, job and daily activities, uh, the the luxury of or, or the blessing of being in touch with the Shastra Panditas on a daily basis is not really possible, <laughs> you know, to, to take help on this. But uh, for example, right, for some strange reason, when I was uh, translating some of the slokas related to Ganga Nadi, you know, it, it proved to be a little bit of a challenge. Uh, I think the point that you mentioned about, uh, you know, not getting the correct words or or uh, you know there is a there is a little bit of a complexity in the shlokas uh, at least from my point of view at least that's what I felt uh, when Sri Vadi Rajaru uh, praises Ganga. Obviously, uh, you know it is an extremely important uh, section of Tirtha Prabandha, so it, you know we cannot compromise. So I I had to go slow there. Um, you know, but but um, uh, you know prayers to Vadi Raja Tirtha Tirtharu was you know on, on going on a continuous basis uh, naturally. Uh, but then I had to slow it down and iterate over the shlokas again and again and then make multiple references to the translations of uh, Kannada, you know, uh, uh, Pramanjanacharya's uh, translation of Kannada and uh, other works and then finally overcame it, uh, you know, uh, hopefully successfully. I think the feedback has been positive, so I don't think it has been a, um, uh, you know, hopeless translation at least. But... Uh, but yeah, there were some, uh, you know, road humps, I would say, in the journey in a couple of places. Nice. Nice to hear that. So now from inspiration to challenges to slowing down to the final outcome. So obviously, as a translator, you would have thought that I did my best. Did you receive any kind of feedback from readers? Whatever could be their status, they could you know, they could be panditas or apanditas, whatever it is. Ultimately, reader is a reader. And the reader has taken time to read 
and revert back to the writer or the translator that itself is a welcome gesture so what kind of responses you got for this translation like no you created an exclusive blog for it and also you converted that into a book format which is available on amazon kindle ebook format uh, so for both for both the blog postings as well as uh, amazon kindle ebook and shri tirtha prabandha what kind of uh, responses you have got and what they mean to you as a translator so uh, even if i should start with a summary of uh, what the feedback meant to me uh, you know as a result of that uh, you know i felt motivated enough to publish couple of more books so far in fact i am working on a third one and with the blessings of uh, you know rairu hopefully uh, soon it should be uh, out as well so that is a direct impact of the feedback and encouragement received from the feedback to this first attempt excellent obviously one feedback has been the fact that uh, shri meena mishrimati meenakshi jain ji actually included it and gave multiple references from the work in her excellent book flight of dts so that was a major major uh, motivating factor for me definitely uh, you know she she found it uh, okay enough to be included as a reference in fact it was her suggestion that it should be published as a book even if it is just an ebook because then uh you know it would kind of get some kind of a digital uh, reference uh, but i also wanted to make it available uh, i have from day one i have been against uh, kind of linking the translations to any kind of a monetary angle mm-hmm. but then that's not possible because some of these publishers do not allow you to publish ebooks for free yes. you know for whatever strange reason yes so you know that's when i decided that uh, whatever uh, a remuneration that comes as a result of publishing it that i would uh, you know most happily uh, transfer the same to uh, govardhana you know goshala nilavara goshala yeah. or shri pejavara yes, yes so uh, you know the fact that for the last 4 years uh, you know even if it is a small amount but it's a regular amount that you know at least once a quarter i calculate and transfer to nilavara goshala yeah. so that in fact itself uh, serves as a feedback on the blog itself in the form of comments and uh, quite a few people on uh, goodreads and on amazon website itself have left their ratings and comments as well mm. and almost a majority of it almost all of it has been very positive right uh, i think they have found it useful i think on twitter also there have been couple of people who uh, you know who asked me uh, and i was happy to say yes and then they started posting Uh, individual shlokas and screenshots from the book and you know uh, giving uh, you know doing their seva uh, for tirtha prabandha using uh, my uh, attempt as as a uh, tool so all these have indicated that uh, it has been well received um, i mean uh, probably you also know how the total audience itself for such works is very limited yes. but that should not be a, a factor at all for uh, us because it is a uh, for for us it is our sadhana and attempt and and not really about uh, how much publicity it gathers but the feedback has been positive almost uh, entirely positive i think one or two people felt it could have been more el- elaborate i think one person had reservations about how i translated and gave notes to the navabandhana shlokas but you would know the reasons behind it so uh, you know <laughs> yeah. every feedback is received but uh, yeah yeah but that apart uh, but that apart uh, it's mostly been positive feedback and encouragement so it is a, that itself i would consider as a like they say right uh, if if uh, the elderly and the uh, you know knowledgeable ones uh, say a few words of praise that itself is blessing so in that way i would say the effort has been blessed excellent now one more uh, maybe a simple or silly question i don't know amongst these responses can you can you uh, make a guesstimation as to how many non madhvas means people in the sense people who are not aware of dvaita and vadiraja tirtha and tirtha prabandha uh, just a guesstimation you know just a guess work uh, how many uh, how much percentage of uh, such people would have responded to your translation i i would say it is actually so there are two categories in there uh, right so my first cut estimate would be at least 40 to 50% of the people are non madhvas 
purely by names and the nature of the feedback they have left and things like that yeah uh, but there are there is also this i would like to sub categorize it right within this there are actually who um, are are uh, madhwas by birth but haven't had much initiation but then got the opportunity to read this there have been quite a few people under that category mm mm-hmm. mm uh you know because they are i mean in a sense like me only do not come from a vaidika environment i mean i come from a vaidika background mm. but you know lead a laukik laukika life mm-hmm. uh, there are many who are uh, don't even come from a vaidika background so you know for them an english translation helped you know you know the feedback makes that clear so there have been many like that who are actually madhwas but not really too much into um, you know madhva sadhana Uh, they have been benefited and an equal number of people who are actually non madhwas uh, but i have found it uh, quite interesting quite interesting very very uh, useful inputs these are because why i am asking these probing questions is that i also teach in a college here private college for uh, uh, life skill courses prescribed by the university the tendency in uh, graduate students to whom i teach first year graduate students the tendency to 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 read and write has largely diminished very very true so when 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 i look at them because i i will be covering not less than 300 to 400 students in an year so that's a sizable audience i believe or a sizable uh, uh, sample that i can consider because year on year i will i am i will be doing this and i am doing it for the last 4 years so year on year what i am trying what i am seeing is that the reading and writing capabilities not the academic subjects they keep reading because uh, they will be made to read by the college management because they want to market right their college obviously that you know it has achieved these many ranks and it cracked so many exams etc the leaving that i'm talking about the extracurricular things so in that sense in uh, in extracurricular activities like reading books other than academic books and trying to write and means put their views and opinions in writing on blogs or on social media or uh, on any other uh, easily available platform where they can instantaneously publish their views and opinions i am not finding that i made many offers to them saying that i myself run couple of websites and i have got one youtube channel be part of it you know i will give you the platform participate for the last 4 years i am offering them all sorts of platforms including this new podcasting even today in class i told them that if you are shy of uh, coming on screen or you don't want to write but you can speak better then come down or record in your home send that audio to me i will publish publish it on my podcasting website lukewarm not even lukewarm you know it's cold response nobody is responding so the very reason why i am making these probing questions is that whosoever youngsters going to listen to this podcast i think they may consider this as an exciting and uh, inspirational uh, uh, talk to undertake reading writing and translating absolutely no i i, I mean uh, see uh, a couple of points here right one is uh, there is no doubt that uh, our generation perhaps from the previous generation our generation and subsequent generation the hold on sanskrit has gone down right yes. but that does that that, that does not mean that uh, we are no longer qualified to read and understand the shastras exactly. so while there is a strong link of our shastra granthas with sanskrit and we cannot deny that link at all you know i am not saying that but uh, you know there are there have been great examples in our parampara itself where uh, you know people who do not have grasp or grip on sanskrit have been blessed by our acharyas and you know uh, uh, haridasas and they have specifically undertaken that task uh, saying even if uh, sanskrit has slipped away shastra should not slip away excellent from your hearts 
and therefore in the current context you know from a regional language uh, you know the instrument could have now changed and english could have been become that you know, uh, that link so i strongly feel while all the effort you know we should make to learn sanskrit you know pick up sanskrit and become uh, experts in sanskrit and propagate sanskrit at the same time this effort of translating into english and regional languages should not be given up and that's how we can retain uh, the you know our uh, the hold on our next generation make sure they stay rooted to our traditions and sampradayas and also uh, be in touch with the great works of our uh, you know sampradaya acharyas and rishis and you know other great uh, scholars so uh we, you know most certainly agree with you that uh, you know that is a very important activity and if at all in any way this discussion can fuel even one or two people to undertake something i would consider myself uh, most blessed it would be you know i'll be really really happy so it was a pleasant uh, talking to you and uh, i would like to talk to you more and more but because of you know limitations <laughs> of uh, time and other factors i would like to catch up with you on um, another podcasting to discuss and understand about the constitution the rights and the challenges being faced by the hindu society as such absolutely that's another favorite area of mine so we can certainly have an interesting conversation around that definitely certainly we will do it uh, so thank you thank you for being a uh, uh, guest for this this episode of mh podcast we will uh, we will definitely talk about the other important topic uh, that we have uh, just spoken of it was an absolute honor and uh, pleasure gautam avare uh, you know i should consider myself uh, blessed and lucky that i got this opportunity uh, very very interesting talking to you and and your uh, passion for tirtha prabandha is kind of uh, you know uh, it's infectious <laughs> so hopefully we can uh, do more uh, churning of tirtha prabandha work and you know derive more uh, nectar out of it that that's my real hope definitely so thank you Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Namaskara. Vado Jalpo Vitandeti Krividha Vidusham Katha MH Podcast Sambhashanam Thank you.